How's it going, everyone? This is ND Sean 45 of the Two Irish Brothers Show here. Now, before we get to the newest episode of our show, I want to take this time to make a quick announcement on behalf of one of our good friends, former Notre Dame tight end Irv Smith, who has appeared on this show before. Now, we are still several months away from the 2022 college football season. I get that. However, it's never too early to plan ahead for 2023. What do I mean by that? Well, as all of us Irish fans know, Notre Dame and Navy will be squaring off once again overseas in Dublin, Ireland. Now, what does that have to do with Irv Smith? Well, Irv, through his company Global Executive Tours, has put together one heck of a package for that game next year. And I'm telling you guys one thing. If you guys, if, if any of you guys out there watching are a golfer, you are going to love this package. So I advise you to go check it out. Now, what, is, what does this package include? Well, for starters, seven nights in Dublin, Ireland, um, five-star hotel and food accommodations, uh, tickets or at least access to uh, the Notre Dame Navy game itself at the Aviva Stadium. But the creme de la creme for all you golfers out there, three rounds on three different golf courses over in Ireland. And actually, I think one of them is uh, up in, in Northern Ireland, if I'm not mistaken. But regardless, I will leave uh, a link in the description box below and you guys can see all the details for yourself and any more information that you might wanna, wanna get. But uh, not only do you have three rounds on three different golf courses, former Notre Dame football players will be joining those, those rounds of golf as well. Irv himself, uh, Reggie Brooks, who has also been on this show, um, other guys like Chris Zorich, Tony Rice, Steve Berline. I think Lee Beckton is going to be there as well. So, yeah, this uh, if you're a golfer, this is a trip of a lifetime. The link will be posted down below. Um, go check it out and uh, make sure you tell Irv that Ben and Sean from the Two Irish Brothers sent you. We would appreciate that very much. So with that said, everyone, here it is, the newest episode of our show, The Two Irish Brothers. Go Irish! How's it going, everyone? I am ND Sean 45. I'm Irish Benjamin 57. And together, the two of us make up this little thing called the Two Irish Brothers Show. Now, first things first, everybody, you know the drill. If you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner. At least I think it's in the bottom right-hand corner. And give this channel some love. Help us grow this baby. And also, for another thing, happy Memorial Day, everyone. That is when we are shooting this video, but this video will not be out till probably Wednesday or Thursday, but regardless, happy Mo Memorial Day. I hope y'all are having a good one and or had a great one, depending on when you're watching this video. Uh, so, uh, so Ben, hopefully your uh, Mo Memorial Day has been going pretty well. I know mine has, but just been relaxed and taking it easy. It has. It's been good. Awesome. Uh, so the first thing we have to do here in this video is you have to you have to perform your first punishment that you owe me. Yep. So everybody, here is what Ben's first punishment for his first loss in our uh, in our betting is going to be. Uh, ben has to call a number that I'm going to send him, and actually, I'm going to send you that number right now. Here it is. Uh, paste. And whatever you do, Ben, make sure you put star six, seven in front of this number so that uh, they cannot uh, call you back or trace your number, whatever. Believe me, I know I was a kid once. I've done my fair share of prank calls. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, here's what Ben has to do for his first punishment that he owes me. Um, and notice he's not dressed as Papa Smurf. That's not until the next USFL episode, not this one. So anyway, Ben, I gave him a number. He doesn't know who it is, but whoever answers the phone, Ben has to say the following to this person. I have always felt a strong chemistry between us. I've fallen madly in love with you, and I am calling to ask for your hand in marriage. So are you ready to do that, Ben? Oh, goodness. 
But I, <laughs> and make sure you hold up to the speaker so everybody can hear. Actually, you know what? If if this affects anything, oh. I'm taking my headphones out because I want everybody to be sure to hear this. You say it was star six seven. Yes, star six seven, and then the number. And, and make sure that speaker's on. Yeah. Hi, I, I wanted to let you know that I have always felt like there is a very deep connection between the two of us. And I have fallen madly in love with you. And I would like to ask for your hand in marriage. Hello? Hello? They did the old switcheroo. <laughs> what a what a punk! You that dude was like, it. "Hold on a second, I'm switching. We're switching gears here for a second. <laughs> what? He didn't say. He, most people you think would play along. All right, you know what? That's good enough for me. But you still you still should have a conversation with her though, huh? You should have had a conversation with that girl. He switched the phone over. Yeah. Like, hey, baby. <laughs> no, that would have been awkward because you are married and uh, no, another girl. That's not cool. That's why I planned it so like a, a dude would answer the phone. Right. <laughs> oh, like okay, that was good. That was that was good. That was good. <laughs> you were pun you were punished. Just being nervous and scared enough is good enough. So, there all no right. Nervous. There's no nervousness there. Oh, you are such a liar. You are a damn liar. How many people actually want to call some random place, some random stranger, and ask them to marry them? <laughs> all right. So, now that that's out of the way and Ben is paid up, so let's talk about a little, uh, little bit of Notre Dame recruiting news. And just recently, Ben, the Irish have picked up a big, big recruit for their backfield running back Jaden Lamar I'm sure you saw that yes now let me tell you something this kid I've seen some highlights of uh, of him in high school and not only is he a very versatile back but he is fast and yep. that's that's what we need on this team is some speed yep yeah uh you know Notre Dame reached real far for uh for this pick um or pick up, I should say, not pick. But, um, you know, he comes out of Lake Stevens, Washington. Not something you normally hear with the Fighting Irish. You know, we hear a lot of California, um, you know, and we hear Texas from time to time. But, um, you know, Washington is just absolutely incredible. Uh, but... He is fourth in the state of Washington, 11th as a running back overall um, in the state of Washington. And then um, national rank is 247. So not, not too shabby with, you know, um, four stars out of five. So you can't really, can't really complain too much there. Well, and the more the more top three hundred guys you have, the better. I mean, this kid, from what I saw, he he passed over schools like Michigan. Um, I think Arizona was one. Um, I think I think in state Washington was recruiting him as well. Uh, so he he passed over some uh, some pretty decent schools to come here. And but not only is this is a, uh, I think this kid <laughs> could definitely be a big asset to us for our running game because uh, in addition to what I said about him being fast and versatile out of the backfield, you know, catching passes. But he I was reading that he also played a little quarterback. In, yeah. in their uh in their in his team's uh run to the their state championship and so that's a big key when it comes to running plays out of the wildcat formation so overall this was just a huge pickup for our backfield and we need as much talent as we can uh in that in that in that running back core not that we don't already but to keep just just building for that future and i'll tell you one thing ben um 
Marcus Freeman, as we all know, he has just been killing it in the recruiting department. I mean, so that that 2023 yeah. class with with now with Jaden Lamar completely stacked and more to follow, hopefully. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and of it's, course, what's crazy to add to your point is Tommy Reese is the guy that heavily recruited him. So, you know, that just as Freeman said, when he came in, every single person on this Notre Dame coaching staff recruits everybody. Not him, not just him, not just the recruiting coordinator. Everybody does. And to see that Tommy Reese was the leading recruiter for this guy is absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. And if it puts it in perspective how far this is for this guy, it is 2,165 miles from Lake Stevens, which is northern Washington, like right on the border of Canada all the way to South Bend. So, you know, that's absolutely incredible that we could grab a guy from that side of the country and bring him to Notre Dame. Well, and I'm sure he'll, he'll fit, fit right in because obviously it's it's very cold in northern Washington. It gets very cold in South Bend. So that should be an easy adjustment for him as far yeah. as uh, location goes. Um, but all I can say is just, you you see and feel the difference as weird as that sounds with Marcus Freeman since he took over and the whole recruiting process. I mean, yes. you know, like you said, every coach is involved in recruiting. And Brian Kelly, I'm not trying to just turn my back on him or anything like that, but from what I heard from certain people is he was lacking that. And two of the biggest things that from what I heard really bothers me is one, he never really went into the inner city school. With why, I don't know. There's just as much talent there as anything. But here's the real kicker. Brian Kelly never really took advantage of the Catholic high schools out there. And I just, I was in complete shock when I heard that. Because when you are the most well-known Catholic university in the United States, famous for football, all of that, why are you not taking advantage right. of the Catholic high schools? And I, I was actually shocked when I when I heard that from my source, because I, I could not believe that. But here's another thing, too. Marcus Freeman is obviously a player's coach. Yes. And that makes, that makes a huge difference because that forms more, more chemistry and camaraderie between coach and player. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with being a, dis a disciplinarian type coach, because sometimes, you know, you need that kind of coach. You need that I hate to say it, but you need that asshole sometimes. Like if you have a group of players that are just out of control and, you know, have no discipline and all that, you need that asshole type coach to be in there. And so I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but this Notre Dame team for a while, they've all been bonding really well, really well, working hard. So I think it was, it was a good time for a player's coach to come in. And that's exactly what Marcus Freeman is. But I'll tell you one thing with him, with him and recruiting, and I know we all have been following the story, uh, the story with quarterback Dante Moore out of the state of Michigan. Um, it's been kind of hard to get a read on him. I mean, you like to think he's still uh, – like Notre Dame is still his number one. But, of course, as we've seen, anything can happen in recruiting. Guys change their mind. But I'll tell you this much. If we're to land Dante Moore – more guys are going to follow, more time. Oh, yes. So yes. landing yes. him would be huge, but of course you can't, you can't speculate. You, you can only speculate at this point in time. You can't say he's a for sure thing. So, you know me, I don't get excited about recruits until they sign on that dotted line. But all yeah. I know is Marcus Freeman, he has been <clears throat> killing it in recruiting. And that is what I love to see as a fan. Yep, and to add one final point, uh, to know how fast and athletic this guy is, 4 five forty, um, a four one shuttle, and a thirty nine inch vertical, and this guy's a high schooler. So, I'll oh let you, God. I'll let you do the, uh, let those cogs turn in your head for a second. So, yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely incredible pickup, absolutely incredible. So. Uh... So with that said, Ben, the last topic topic we have to talk about here, and this is actually a request, and I'm pretty sure we would have gotten to it eventually, but everybody's been following the story with uh, 
with Nick Saban versus Jimbo Fisher, you know, let, let, as the old Mills Lane, the boxing ref would say, let's get it on. <laughs> yeah. A lot of drama with those two. And, you know, it's kind of hard for me to take a side here because for starters, you have you have Nick Saban, who I can only wonder why he's complaining because he's won how many national championships in recent history? Yeah. And then and then Jimbo Fisher. Yeah. I mean, without I, I don't want to badmouth the guy, but do you, I think he's kind of calling the kettle black a little bit when he's bad mouth and saving because when he was at Florida State, didn't they get into some kind of trouble down there, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, I do believe. I, I think that I do believe they did. But then again, I don't I don't know. He, but yeah, yes. you know, it doesn't you know, it doesn't really matter. Let's see, here's I mean, my and, and yes, and I mean, okay, when you start calling out people on you know, like this whole NIL situation that we're seeing now all across college football. I don't think anybody that is a true college football fan can say that they don't know that everybody is putting money under the table before this NIL came. I mean, you can't tell me that like a program like Alabama or Florida State when they were really good or Miami when they were really good. I mean, you know, we had the whole documentary on, you know, SMU and stuff with players getting paid. You know, I mean, I'm not saying it was right at the time. I'm not saying, you know, that's something that you should be doing or all that. But many were doing it. Many were doing that. And to see Nick Saban come out and basically say, you're buying yourself a national title, because that's basically what he's saying. Um you know, I, I mean, you kind of did it already. So I, I just, I don't know. I think, I think it's all stupid. I, I think, I think Saban might be legit threatened by Jimbo Fisher and and the these Texas A and M Aggies. I mean, they haven't put it all together yet, obviously, but on paper they look really good. They got a hell of a class coming um, in. So, you know, I mean. A good recruiting class doesn't mean success. Florida State is a is no offense to Florida State and not taking a shot, stating facts and statistics here. Florida State has had in the last 15 years a top 10 recruiting class. I, I do believe like 10 out of those 15 years, and they've done what? So, I mean, you know, I, that doesn't always equate, you know, perfection and all that, but it helps. Well, so, yeah, I think it's stupid. I think it's absolutely stupid, bottom line. And like you said, pot, meat, kettle. I'm sorry. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, cry me a river, Saban. Cry me a river, Jimbo Fisher. Like, you're making how much money? Like, you're doing what? I mean. Your your uh, trophy case is loaded with how many national championship trophies? Right. So, just what, what, are you, what are you complaining for? Right. And I'm not, again, I'm not letting Jimbo off the hook either, but it's like. What is what is Saban complaining about? I mean, look, the NIL is, is it the NIL is in place. And and it's yes, here granted, to stay. granted, it's it's uh it varies from state to state. Yeah. But if Texas A and M took advantage of that, because I know I know the coaches can't say like, hey, we're gonna give you if they're going to recruit, they can't say if they're giving you this deal or that deal, it's from a third party, correct? Yeah, I still I need to like more research into everything that they I, I do too. Now. But you all know, I know but, is from my understanding, yeah. I mean, you know, you get sponsored. I mean, look at um, – well, I can't think of his name now. Alabama's quarterback made millions last year. So, I mean, you're getting paid to play football. That's what it is. I'm sorry, you know. And if you don't like that – The bottom line is they took – The bottom line is they took advantage of something that was legal. They didn't break any laws. They didn't, didn't do anything wrong. So, if it's legal – then what you you don't have to like it, you don't have to like it, but it is something that's legal, right? And if they, and and of course if they legitimately if Texas A and M legitimately broke any rules, then I'm sure somebody will find out about it and they'll get punishment. But they, as far as far as I know, they didn't do anything wrong. They took advantage of something that was legal. Yeah, more power to them. Yeah, and I yeah, and you hit the nail on the head. If they have done something wrong, the way things are now. 
the NCAA would find out about it very quickly. Yeah. And they would put a stop to it very quick. Well, one would hope they would put a stop to it, but we've seen kind of the biasness of the NCAA. Yeah. As another name fans. And even uh a couple other teams that I won't name have seen that. But yeah, so it's it's stupid. I don't really care. It doesn't affect us. We don't play Alabama or A and M this season oh. unless they get into the playoffs. You know, well, we, so. we do have we do have A and M coming up on the schedule in a few years, yeah. and so um, and same with Alabama. But yep. this year, I'm not worried about either of them until yeah, it comes time for potentially playoffs. You know, but that's a right. long road. You know, and I'm not saying Notre Dame's making the playoffs. And I'm not saying Alabama or A and M are making the playoffs. You know, so it's a day by day basis, man. Yeah. It's yeah. So, yeah. well. I think uh, that covers everything that we have to talk about here in, in this video. And I was going to do our our picks for uh, next week's uh, USFL action. But you know what, everyone? Ben and I will do that. And uh, you can see that posted on our Twitter page of our picks for USFL Week, a or week 8 action. Sounds um, good. So on that note, everyone, uh, have a great rest of your Memorial Day. And I hope you enjoyed this video on Wednesday or Thursday, whenever we decide to post it. And on that note, I am Indy Sean 45. I'm Irish Benjamin 57. And as we always say, God bless, good night, and go Irish. Go Irish. <laughs>